And here the record begins. So let me try to go back uh, to this and uh, mention again how the load works out. Okay, as you can uh, see now, uh, painted in blue here, this is the, the the load where B1 must be responsible for. This is the area of the floor that B1 has to uh, carry. Okay. So now we know that the total load per area that this B1 has to carry is 900 kilograms per square meter coming from you know, the total date load and life load. Please, you must understand the unit we use as well. You see that the, the unit for the load here is the load per area. So you should know that's a load of floor. And uh, the load of the beam itself, it's a load per length, okay? So if you understand the load, it means that you know what you're doing. If you don't understand the load, chances are you, you can mess up things uh, pretty good. Okay, so now we have the total load, 400 plus 500, that's a 900 per square meter acting on the floor. So it's a floor, uh, it's a load on the area. Now, I, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it the first time or during the question, but let's uh, say it again that this load, because it, it is applied throughout the length of the beam, you know, throughout the length like this. So the nature of the load is the uniform load. So you need the uniform load, which we can obtain by uh, multiplying the load per area with the tributary width here. If you multiply with one width, which is this dimension, you are turning the, the load in the blue area into the load per length of the beam. Because the area is the width here, okay, multiplied by the length. So if you only multiply the load per area by the width, you should get the load per length, which in nature is the uniform load. If you multiply both, uh, you, if you multiply this load by both the width and the length, you would get the total load, which is a point load. But the nature of the floor is a uniform load because it is planted throughout the length of the beam. So if you change the nature of the load, you change the type of the internal force as well. It's correct that if you, if you look uh, quickly at this beam, if I draw it like this, with the uniform load and with the point load, the total load is the same, yes, because the total load here is the W multiplied by L. This is P, which is equal to W multiplied by L. But the moment from the analysis, especially the internal moment of the beam will be different. And therefore we as engineers cannot alter or change the nature of the load. If you change the nature of the load, uh, it is say, unacceptable because you are changing the way your structure behaves. You are therefore analyzing it incorrectly. So this may be, it gives you the same reaction, yes, but not the same moment. So now let's hope that we are clear on this one. So from the, the load on the blue area, if I multiply it by the tributary width, I will get the load per length, which is the, the, the nature of the load itself. Okay, so therefore we now have the, uh, the uniform load. Okay, and plus the cell weight, now we have the total load acting on the beam as a uniform load, which is equal to 1740 kilogram per meter. Now we clear this one. Are we clear on this one? Yes. Okay, good. So that, that means we can move on. So now you can look at beam uh, B1. And I'm going to draw the free body diagram again here. Because of the nature of the load, it is uniform load. So you can expect your beam to look like this. Okay. So the length is eight meters. So now this is the free body diagram. And when you are in the world of statics, you know, this is given directly to you. But in the real world, nobody's going to do this for you. 
you need to be able to look at the floor plan and calculate the load that your beam has to carry by yourself. So this W becomes 1740 kilogram per meter, right? So everyone is with me in this case. So now you guys are in the third year now and you have had two classes about the basic analysis of stuff. So please, when you see a simple beam, you should spend like 10 seconds draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. This should come to you automatically. And that, so sorry for, you know, it's just a bit crooked, but I, I did my best. So that's your shear force diagram. You know that you have the constant uniform load, which is going to give you a linear shear. And when you have a linear downward shear like this, you're gonna have the second degree curve for your moment. This is a gimmick, okay? And this is of course, WL over two. That is WL over two. And this is WL squared over eight. This stuff is your bread and butter. You don't even need to recall it. You should sleep about it, you know? When you sleep, you must sleep with the correct formulas. So now you know the maximum shear is just 1740 multiplied by eight over two, but that is figured out. The maximum moment is 1740, eight square over eight. So that is over and done with B1. Is that a question? No, ka. No, ka. Thank you, Sutima. I know you, you made a mistake that you sort of regretted yourself, and now this is a piece of cake for you. <laughs> you shouldn't have any question, really. So, anyone else? Any question? Piece of cake stuff, right? Um, okay, so that's uh, B1 over and done with. B2 is quite similar in the nature, you see. Um, it's the, the nature of the uh, B2 is pretty much the same as B1. But where's the dimension? But the, the, the derivative width is different this time because B2 is going to be, let's say any, any, any B2. I'm gonna draw this uh, B2, okay? Let's focus on this B2. So the tributary width that this B2 is gonna support half the floor on the left and then half on the right. So again, um, the area the B2 is responsible for is this area. But be careful, when you look at the drawing, you should know that B2 is shorter than B1 and it, it's on the different dimension. Right here is the tributary width. One second. Sorry, it's a uh, food business. Okay. So uh, B2, we can, we can do the same, all right? Without further ado. Oh, I'm running out of space already. Okay, that's fine. So you guys uh, stick to this. I'm gonna go over to the next page to, uh, to take care of B2, okay? So my B2. It's uh, uh, this is B2. Right here. That's uh, 5.6 meters with the uniform load acting on it as well. And this uniform load is equal to 900, right? Again, the total load the same, but now the tributary width is 1.2 meters here, right? So we multiply that with 1.2. That should give us the uniform load of the floor acting on the beam. 
Now, don't forget your beam self weight. Yes. Plus 300. Okay. Well, I never had that before, you know, the kids around and doing the lunch thing and then, uh, and then this uh, structural analysis. So this is the total load. Anyone can do that for me? Like 180, 1130? Yeah. It's equal to 1308, uh, yeah. Okay. Per meter. All right. So again, this is the, your bread and butter. You should. Did yet later. So again, your shear force diagram look like that. And your bending moment diagram doesn't look like that. And that is WL over two, one, three, eight, zero, multiplied by 5.6 over two. Okay, and the maximum moment is WL square over eight, which is one, three, eight, zero. L square is 5.6 square over eight. So that's your V max and M max. Simple as that. Is there any question? Just a kid, right? Simple as that. So let's go to B3 now. You will see the B3 is the first one that you can say it's a primary beam, okay? Uh, or it's a main girder because you need to have B3 to support B2. So let's look at B3. Can I use a different color? Mm, color is not very interesting, but anyway. Let's use this one. This is your B3. And you see, B, your B2s do not run directly into the columns. And B2 would need B3 to support them. Because otherwise, how can you have B2, right? So that means how many B2, how many B2 you have? You have this one, then one more, one more, one more. So you have four B2s acting on B3. Okay, is there any question? So if there isn't any question, we can now proceed to B3. The total length of B3 is right here, which is six meters. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, how about the one on the very right? Very right. Oh, you mean you mean this one? Um, what? Yeah, at the bottom. I know. You mean this one? This one, right? This, uh, this one. Correct. Yeah. This yeah. one goes directly into the column, so it is directly supported by the column. It's not going to be supported by B three, correct? Okay. When 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 the beam is that uh, is directly supported by the columns, it means uh, your job is done. But the problem uh, with this uh, four, because there are no columns here, 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 here. These four, we have to be supported by B3. And it is our job as engineers to provide, to provide these supports. Now we provide four columns at each uh, corner, right? Right here. We have columns here, 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 and here. So that means like, the, the beams at the edge uh, have the, the say the, the 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 luxury to get into the supports right away, so we need not worry about that. And B three after supporting four of B twos will go directly into the columns as well. So doesn't it cost the moment about the column on on the left another left one? Cost the moment on the column. Yeah. If, if you take a moment about the column uh, located on V3 and B5C, uh 
Uh huh. Uh, well, so let's say because we you you remember when you draw your it's a good question it's a very good one, but when we when we analyze this beam, uh, just the color right when we analyze this beam, we always say that hey um, it's a simple beam. So when you draw the free body diagram of this beam, you can try to make a difference. Yeah, let's use black here. So this beam, it's a simple beam, right? Do you agree with me that it's a simple beam? No. Okay. Yeah. Do you? Okay. Good. So is there a moment here? No. Good. Neither here. Right? So we, as engineers, say, I want a simple beam here. And in doing so, you are saying that there is no moment at the support because you want it to be like that. As engineers, we control the behavior of the structure. So when, when we say this, there's no moment into the column, right? Because this is where the column is. Correct? It, it, it go up as well. Because we say it's a simple beam, we sort of apply the triangle and a circle at the end. So it's a hinge and a roller. And we analyze it such that this behaves as a simple beam, which has no moment at the ends, at both ends. So our columns should not have moment, correct? And when we analyze B3, we're going to do it so that B3 will be a simple beam as well. Your columns can have moment when it is part of the frame, like I showed you before, but not now. Okay, I just wonder if uh, in, statis, uh, in statics, we, we in account in every load, no matter where it acts. Uh, we do, we do, but, but, but you know, I, I'm, I'm going to draw this for you. Let's go back to the lecture. This page is more clean, okay? This is the beam that you are talking about, the beam on the edge, okay? And here, I'm gonna draw the column. Okay, that's my column. So that's the beam coming in. But you are saying this is a simple beam. So you account for every load. This simple beam has a uniform load acting on it. But because you have a roller and a hinge, which is incidentally this one, correct? Sorry. This one. So coming back here, this beam is exactly like this. So do we account for all the load or not? You will, you will analyze it and you will have reaction, correct? Yeah. Yeah, but the point is that because we want it to be a simple beam, so after we account for this W, what only will go into the column? What will only go into the column is just this reaction, but not moment. Okay, I understand this point, but um, good, good, good. I think uh, the, this drawing is for the B2, right? But for analyzing the B3. No, B3, uh, it, it I'm, not I'm, I, I haven't drawn the B3 in here yet. So let's draw B3 by using different color. Now this is going to be B3 in this direction. Okay, and then you have B2 that doesn't go into the column. This is B2, this is B2. So it will have to be supported by this B3. Correct? That's your B2, the green one. Okay, so the, the black so one is B2. carried by the column, not the B2. The, uh, the B2. Not the B3, right. So this is the B3 carrying four B2s before itself being carried by the column. Yeah. 
You know, it's it's very important you ask a question like this because a transition from statics to the system of the structure sometimes can be demanding. It's very important that you ask, okay? So you can see now that this is B3. And ah, I, 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 I can see what your problems are now. You, you, don't, you don't see the picture why your B2 and B3 you know, come and uh, collide at one point, right? But they, they meet at the point where the column is. So both go into the column. And to, to complete this picture, there's another B2 here, right? And then B3 will, will carry on and then meet another column here. Right? And of course, there's another column here. Oops. Right, sorry. Uh, there's another column here. Okay? Is there a case where the, the B2 will go on the B3? At the the remote. You mean you mean at this at this particular location? Yes, that that, that be well, well, you go onto well, the B three. Just when whenever there is a column, do you think the beams care? It, it if they find a column, the 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 Lord doesn't care. The Lord just want to go straight into the columns and down to the foundation, right? So it doesn't. Right here, it doesn't matter if B3 sits on top of the black beam, or let's call this one uh, B2X, okay? It doesn't matter if B2X sits on top of B3 or B3 sits on top of B2X because both are supported by the columns. And as soon as you, you, you find a column there, the reaction of B2 and B3 will go directly into the columns and down to the foundation. End of, end of the work. Okay? Understandable. Good. So we are, we are a little bit be beyond the time. And um, I'll let, let, let me try to go over there for a few more minutes so the, the class ends nicely. Okay? You can see that for B3 now, the free body diagram will be like this. You will have one. Ooh, uh, okay, hang on. It's not in the middle, okay. Okay. So you have one, two, three, and four reactions coming in from B2. So that's the free body diagram of your B3, how it looks like. So um, this is equal to the reaction here. Okay, so if, you, if any of you could uh, do that for me, or I can do it now. Um, Sorry, do we need to consider the beam cell weight of this one? Of course, of course, I'm, I'm not finished yet. So that's, uh, this is equal to three, eight, six, four kilogram force. So that means this is three, eight, six, four, three, eight, six, four, three, eight, six, four, and then three, ooh, my handwriting is gone. Three, eight, six, four, a kilogram force, okay? And of course, you cannot, ditch the cell weight of the beam. So this is like this. That's a 300. Okay. So that becomes a free body diagram of your B3. And one minute with this, because you guys can do the uh, tutorial session on Thursday now. So let, let me try to cover one more thing. The tricky part is B4. You see, um, let me try to erase this. Okay, there is a part of this again, the beam on the rim here. This guy has no support. 
So what we need to have is just to have the overhanging portion of B4 to try to carry this one. So you have B4 that not only will have to carry one, two, three, um, B1, but it has to go over the support and take care of this beam as well. And in turn, this beam B4 has only one column, which means on this side, it will have to be supported by the cantilever portion coming out of B5. So you can see now, if I want to try to, to complete the free body diagram of B4, um, I need to go to this. Let's begin in the next page. So my B4 will look like this. And then it will have the reaction coming from that beam which we haven't calculated yet. And then it will have three B1s in the middle. So that's our B4. Right? Now let's go back and look at B4 again. B4 will have to support this brown beam and then it will have to carry one, two, three B1s in the middle. And then by itself, the beam itself will have to be supported by B5C portion. Okay, so let me wrap this up. This is the brown beam, the reaction from the brown beam. This is the reactions from B1. And then in turn, here will be supported by B5C. So that's the idea. Okay, it may be a little bit too quick on this portion, but once you get a hang of, of the system, it, it just should be uh, straightforward now. And then, yes, of course, as a self way. All right. Now well, that's it for today, guys. Let me uh, stop the uh, the record session.